Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. My name is Carlos Casanova. I'm here with co-hosts Kathleen Wilson and Shane Carlson. Hello. And today's guest is uh, Rob Akershok from, um, from Open, Open Group. I believe, uh, Rob, you're also the chair for IT for IT within the Open Group. Is that correct? That's correct, Carlos. I'm the current IT for IT chair for, for the, within the Open Group. So I'm working on the IT for IT standard, but I'm also implementing it in practice with large organizations. So uh, we, we can learn and get feedback from that directly as well. Great. So, so Rob, why don't you give us just like a really brief, uh, you know, for those that don't, maybe don't know the Open Group, and um, and IT for IT, you know that you know that elevator pitch of you know what is Open Group, what's IT for IT, and and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Now let me start with the Open Group itself. You probably uh, know the Open Group. They manage a number of standards within the uh, market. Uh, one of them is Toga for enterprise architecture, for example, but also Argimate for modeling. But also Unix is governed within the Open Group as a Unix as a standard. So I, Open Group has a different standards, and IT for IT is one of them. Uh, so let me briefly explain why the IT for IT was needed, um, because I think you know the, the, the story that many IT organizations, they, they feel that need to transform themselves, to become more agile, deliver faster, be more better quality, but also be more transparent and better communication, collaboration with the business. So it's basically about cheaper, better, faster, but also lower the risks. Now, many organizations are in this journey of transformation. Uh, you can call it digital transformation. But what they miss is a kind of guide or a standard or reference model that guides them what do they need to achieve in this new operating model. So they need a sort of blueprint for an operating model. How do I manage a planning, building, deploying, and manage IT and continuous improving? And that's what IT for IT provides. It's a kind of a reference model, a blueprint that tells you what capabilities do I need to manage IT, what information do I need, and how do I become more transparent and can continuously improve my IT function. So, so, Rob, one of the one of the biggest I, I won't call it a criticism necessarily, but an observation that I've, I've heard a lot of people make in the industry around IT for IT is that uh, it, it feels very academic. And you know, I think ITIL suffered from kind of the same perception uh, at, at certain points in its implementation arc. Um, you know, what what would you just say to folks in the industry that kind of view you know IT for IT as being you know kind of a very academic you know very yeah. academic oriented individuals? You know, what what's your counter to that? Yeah, I, I can imagine if you look at IT for IT, it looks like a, an architectural blueprint. Yeah, for example, this, this is the blueprint with a lot of yeah, blue dots and things like that. But it's actually based on a number of organizations sitting together in practice and resolve the IT management issues like a shell, but also different vendors like ServiceNow, HPE and Accenture, different parties involved. So it is not just a theoretical model. It is built based on actual practice and issues that we need to solve. Let me highlight some of the issues, what we need to solve, which ITIL is a good a model. We still use that. But what we needed is better collaboration between the different parties in the IT value chain. We have more vendors in our ecosystem than we had before, not just cloud vendors, but also development parties. And we need to integrate and collaborate with all these parties. And what we missed in the past is a sort of, what information can I exchange with vendors? How do I really trace an idea or demand from, from the business into production? What is the cost of my IT services? What, what services do I even provide to my business? So what was missing is that glue that, glings, that, that brings everything together. It's not just the data, but also the capabilities you need and the flow of work, not an individual set of 30 processes and hundreds of IT management. Now, I, I think you, you, you realize you have the same issue with if you look at larger IT organizations. They have plenty of processes, plenty of tools, but they still don't have transparency and traceability. And that's because they miss the sort of a blueprint or guideline, how it all fits together in an end-to-end -end flow of work. And, uh, and that's what it for it brings together. And it's not replacing ITIL. You still use ITIL practices out there, PMBOK, COVID, PRINCE2. But now you select the components that you really need but, and bring the bigger picture, but also enable the interoperability that you need with vendors, like ticketing exchange or getting cost information from vendors. Uh, but also if you have a development tool that needs to integrate with your testing tool and your deployment tool, but bringing the tooling, data, and the interoperability together. Excellent. So, Kathleen, I know you've got a lot of experience with with frameworks out there. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts uh, on seeing this and, and kind of seeing the work that IT for IT has been doing recently? 
Well, I, I enjoy it. I actually, I got to speak at one of the IT for IT conferences in San Francisco uh, a little over a year ago. And it was uh, really interesting. It was refreshing to see a new framework. I think one of the challenges is where to start. So Rob, could you tell me like, yeah. you know, I, I'm an organization. I'm I, I understand, you know, service management. I've been doing service management basic, you know, I haven't gotten anything past incident or change, maybe some service level management, but now I'm, I'm going through a digital transformation. You know, yeah. where do I start? Okay. Yeah, there are different ways to start, but the typical best way to start with IT for IT is not in a siloed approach, not just looking at operations or development, but look at the bigger picture. So what IT for IT is typically used is to start with looking at the entire way you organize IT today, and you use IT for IT basically as a blueprint, as a sort of tool, diagnostic tool to plot, okay, how am I running IT today? Just from a portfolio perspective, how do I get demands from the business, development, testing, deployment, monitoring, how am I doing it today? You plot that to the reference architecture, and you immediately see blind, blind spots, potential gaps, areas for improvement. And then you start to prioritize, okay, if I want to be the more agile, transparent IT organization, what do I need in place in the future? And then build your roadmap. And IT for IT is basically, you can use that, right? this is the picture, what where you are today, what, what is missing today, what kind of interaction or feedback loops you don't have. And then you don't need to implement all at once. For example, some larger organization, they start with a specific application that's so critical, they say, let's do that end to end from a demand to getting some in production, a full pipeline and the feedback loops. Other organizations say, well, we, knew, we moved to cloud and let's, that's from the start, everything that's managed in this new IT cloud, we manage that from the start in an efficient way. So not just deployment, but everything. So the understanding the cost, understand the application running in the cloud. So you can use different methods, but you start typically as a sort of uh, blueprint layer and say, okay, as a diagnostic tool, basically. And then you can select the projects that, or applications end-to-end -end that you can implement it. So, so Rob, for... I mean, you've been doing this for a while, and like you said, you're not only just on the uh, within the open group, you know, and the chair in the IT for IT, but you're actually implementing as well. So, what's the what's the biggest barrier that you know? Whether is is it leadership that's pushing back on this? Because you know, we're all in this space. And, you know, we we yeah. see client after client struggling to you know to get out of their own way. Um, some of this seems to be fairly straightforward in terms of you know what you should do. Yeah. So. In your, in, in more specific to IT for IT, why, why is there pushback? Why aren't more companies, you know, really just adopting or when you talk to them, you know, what do they say as to, no, we can't do that? Yeah, it's typically the governance around it. So imagine you talk to somebody and say, we want to manage end-to-end -end IT services better. And somebody says, I'm only responsible for development or only responsible for testing or only responsible for service management and operations, or there are even people thinking that the project management office is still so important. So everybody says, I got my own set of processes, tools and practices, and we need to work together. But there's no one that really says, okay, let's think about the end-to-end -end picture. Who decides to implement what processes, tools to improve things? So it is typically governance issue. And sometimes it's also about uh, there is not a clear budget so people said okay i don't have money for this right to implement but in reality you're already spending a lot of money on implementing IT management process and tools and continue to improve it so you're already doing this project if you if you that is also a, a good start with it for it just make an inventory of all the projects and initiatives you have in your it organization to improve the it function you will be amazed that you have 20 different projects running out there. It could be monitor application performance monitoring. It could be test automation, changing the project management system, uh, right. changing the service management, doing discovery, cloud automation, uh, testing. You can imagine there's a lot of projects going on right now. So you're doing it all, but there's missing a sort of glue how it all fits together and steer that. But typically that's the governance issue. So um, you need to start with a sort of uh, a driver. Why do I need to change my IT function? Uh, a lot of organizations still don't realize that they're not doing very well. And in the past, I mean, IT is not managed, managed badly, right? Because the services are, are available. So, but we need to deliver faster now. We got more components to manage. We got cloud components, internet of things. We have to deliver changes much faster, more frequent. So we got more vendors to manage, more changes, more releases, more security events. We got more management data than we had ever before. So we need to change that because we cannot manage it the same way as we've done in the past. 
And yeah. it's not that we didn't have all the tools, right? I guess any larger IT organization, they have 100, 200, 300 different IT management tools with different data repositories. We have no insight. We use Excel to manage IT. And Excel is a nice tool, but it's not how you can manage an end-to-end -end service, right? Um, so we yeah. need to change behavior. Uh, it's, not, it's not just about ownership of the process and tools, but also behavior. Do we really can work together to implement this end-to-end -end value chain? For my dear coming in, develop it, building and testing it, we need to work together. Just to give you an example, what is a unique service, a service like an application delivered to the business? We don't, most organizations don't have a single repository and say, these are all my applications I manage. Who are the teams working on it? What is the next release coming? What does it really cost? Where are my source codes? Who's managing the test? Who's using my service even, right? It's a terrible nightmare for most IT organizations because they miss a sort of general data model or, or reference architecture to link everything together. Yeah, and it, looks, it looks like we may have lost Carlos there, Rob. So. Okay. Uh, uh, and I think we're right actually at the top of our time limit here. So I, I will ask you one question uh, and, right. and close this out here. First of all, thank you so much for, for joining and providing this information. Yeah. But um, if there were folks out there in, in various businesses looking at IT for IT and they want to join the conversation around IT for IT, uh, you know, or hear about some of the successes that are happening in other places, where would they go uh, to get that information or join that conversation? Yeah, on the Open Group website, there is a, there's an it for it section. So the Open Group it for it website, you get a lot of materials there. There is a YouTube channel for the Open Group with a lot of reference cases and presentation on it for it So what I recommend is to go to the Open Group website, look at it for it and download some of the materials. So we have different introduction guides, management guides, and other materials. And I think the best way to start is to use it as a blueprint, start an analysis of what you are now, and, and may, make this transformation to this new IT operating model. Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us today, Rob, and I uh, hope to see you out there in the industry very soon. Okay, thank you very much for your time, and have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Kathleen.